On this channel, we have been talking about how to simplify state management on React using Redux, applying hooks, and the repository pattern. We have seen how to work with synchronous and asynchronous actions. Now we are going to see another alternative for global state management using reactive programming with observables implementing the RxJS library. If you have seen previously these both videos about using hooks and the repository pattern for Redux, you will see that the transition to RxJS will be so easy and very similar in code to a Redux implementation because of using the mentioned design patterns. Before continuing watching the video, it's very important that you are familiar with the following concepts. For this example, you can get the link of the source code on the description. We're going to use the CRUD use case again, where we can create, update, and delete a customer. Also, the data is listed for an API call and persisted on a simulated backend with JSON server when we add, update, or delete a record. The state of the application is controlled using RxJS. I have also added a new view called preloaded that consumes the state from the main view to render the same cards. This process is also handled with RxJS. Now let's take a look at the code. Again, we have the same use customer API hook that I described on the past video of Simplify Redux for async actions. Here we can find all the API calls related to the customer entity to perform some of the crude actions on the backend. This use customer API hook will be used by the use customer repository. Also notice that we are calling the use customer observable hook, which will handle the customer state using the RxJS library. Before continuing analyzing this repository hook, let's take a look at how the customer observable hook works. It is responsible for handling the customer state. If you can see, it's very similar to the reducer hook we created on the past video, but now we are working with an observable instance. So first, we need to create the observable instance outside the hook to ensure that it's a singleton object. If we declare it inside the hook, this instance will be created over and over when a React render occurs, always returning a new observable object with an empty state. The observable instance must receive as parameter the initial state and must be typed with the customer state type. With this, we have declared a global singleton instance of the customer observable that contains the customer state and can be consumed from any component. Notice that for creating the observable, we are using the behavior subject class from RxJS which helps for creating and handling observables. It will provide methods for changing the current data inside the observable and to watch the data change for getting the updated state or watch the data change when a component is unmounted for avoiding duplicate subscriptions that generate memory leaks. Here we have defined the function set next state for updating the observable data with the new state using the payload. So basically what it does is to get the current value of the observable and combine it with the payload to generate the new state. Later we will see how this function updates the state of a component to render it. For now we will see how it is used inside each state function. Notice also that they are very similar to the Redux example we did on a past video. Let's start with the list function that will update the customer state with array of customers, adding as payload the customer's array and an empty error message. The create function will push a new customer record inside the customer's array, which was cloned from the current state stored inside the observable. Then the array with the new record is sent to the set next state function with an empty error message. For the update function, again, the customer's array is cloned from the observable state. Then it's mapped with the update customer record using its ID to be sent to the set next state function. Finally, the remove function again clones the customer's array from the observable and extracts the record to delete using the record's ID, and the resulting array is sent back to the set next state function. For the ING state management functions, basically it send as payload a flag of boolean type to indicate when an action is running for rendering the loaders on the view. And for the error is sent the message. 
Also, is defined the function getObservable to return the customer observable subject. Lastly, all the state actions and the getObservable function are returned. Now we have analyzed the useCustomerObservable hook. Let's go back to the useCustomerRepository hook, where the observable will have an interaction with the API is called. Here is called the customer observable to be used inside each group repository function. Let's explain each one. On the list function is called the listing flag to render the listing message before the customers are fetched by the customer API list method. Then the customer's array is passed as parameter to the list observable method for rendering each of the cards and finally the listing flag is set to false for showing the cards. For the create function, we have something similar. When the create button is pressed, a true flag is passed to the creating method from the observable to render the skeleton card inside the view. Then the create API method is called to store the record on the backend, responding with the created record data that will be sent to the observable, that will add a new customer card inside the view. Finally, a false flag is set to hide the skeleton card and show the generated record. On the update function, the same pattern is repeated. When the update button is pressed, a true flag is passed to the observable for rendering the updating alert, then the update API call is done, responding with the updated record to be sent to the observable for rendering the customer card with the new data. Finally, a false flag is set to hide the updating alert. Lastly, we have the delete function. When the delete button is pressed, a true flag is passed to the observable for rendering the deleting alert, then the delete API is called to delete the record. The record ID is passed to the observable for deleting it from the state. And finally, a false flag is set to hide the deleting alert. Notice also that all the group functions are catchable in case an error occurs and sent to the error method from the observable for rendering a red alert with the error message. Also, is defined the function getCustomerObservable that returns the customer observable subject which will be consumed by the view to enable the subscription to the observable change. With this, the repository hook will return all the CRUD and GET observable functions. Now let's go to the view component. Here is called the use customer repository. For subscribing to the observable change, it's used the use observable hook that receives as argument the customer observable subject retrieved from the repository. This hook is responsible for initializing the observable subscription when the component is mounted and to finish the subscription when it is unmounted. Inside of the subscription, it's called a state setter to capture the newer observable state when a change occurs to re-render the component. Remember that the change are sent to the subscription when the next method is run from the observable subject. Finally, this hook returns the update state to the view. With this, we can render the customer state to display each of the alerts and cards. Also, we can call the create action inside the add customer button. Inside the customer card is also called the customer repository for calling the update and delete actions. To check that the customer observable is a singleton instance, we can take a look at the preloaded customer screen component. We can notice that the data persists because it's called from the same customer observable and was preloaded by the main screen component when was called the list method from the repository. To conclude, some of the big advantage for using RxJS instead of Redux is that we don't need a store for creating the root state object, reducing boilerplate code. Also, we don't need to wrap into a store provider the whole application. Instead of that, we have a global piece of a state inside of each observable hook so, in a few words, the observable hooks act like reducers and the store. The readability of the code improves a lot, so we can directly call methods for state handling instead of action types. In this advantage, we need to take care of component memoization when rendering a long list of records, something that is already handled by Redux state selectors. If not, the application performance will slow down. For this example, we have more than 100 records. We can see on the React Profiler that updating a single card data 
it re-renders the world view with the other cars and the application becomes slow. To prevent this behavior, it's needed to use React Memo on the customer card export to check if the component should update. If we look again, it is now only re-rendered the data record, improving the performance times a lot. Another disadvantage is that we lose the Redux Dev tools for debugging a state. However, it's not a big problem because the state is separated into observable hooks using manual debugging. Thanks for watching, see you next time.